Hello, hello everyone. Uh, hello and welcome to Mar Labs and Dark Trace co-sponsored uh, cyber threats webinar. Before we start, a uh, few logistics. Uh, we will keep all the phone lines on mute so that we avoid any background noise. And I wanted to update everyone that today's webinar will be recorded during the presentation. We'll conduct a brief survey and also open for questions and answers uh, towards the end of the session. Uh, so a quick introduction about the present about the presenters today. So my name is Bala. I'm your host uh, you know, for this uh, webinar. Uh, I had the infrastructure and cyber security services practice at Marlabs, uh, responsible for working closely with our clients in providing information security risk assessment and all the way up to security operations. On behalf of our teams and partners, it is my pleasure to host this webinar and thank you very much for your time. Joining me today are two distinguished threat intelligence experts in the industry, uh, Bimod Matthew and Dan Fain. A quick introduction about them. Uh, Bimod Matthew is a senior cybersecurity analyst and a specialist in Marlab's uh, threat management uh, teams. He is a member of Electronics Crimes Task Force, uh, and worked closely with law enforcement and, and the US Secret Service. We also have Dan Fain. He is a senior threat intelligence specialist and technology evangelist at Darktrace. Uh, in this webinar, Bimod and Dan will share their views on the characteristics of an attack seen today and then present an IoT specific use case. So our objective today is to help our audience to raise awareness and broaden the CISO mindset when developing a strategic uh, cybersecurity plan for detecting uh, uh, security threats. Dan and Bimod will take your questions towards the end of our presentation uh, and, and also make uh, concluding remarks. So the, the growing interest with the threat intelligence program is on the rise. I think we are all seeing today. We today we have about uh, 20 participants uh, joining this webinar, representing by all the industry sectors. You know, it is our pleasure to uh, to have you with us today. We thank you for joining us, and we hope that you will find uh, value in the content of this webinar. As a, as a starting reference and to kick this webinar, let me share some statistics about our organization for you to see and size and the breadth of the depth of services that we cover. So Marlabs is a digital technology solutions company headquartered in New Jersey and centered on providing world-class security operations and threat hunting, coupled with leading edge incident response and forensic investigation capabilities. Besides, we also assist our clients with IT risk and controls, consulting and helping them remediation efforts, specifically focused on FedRAMP, FFIEC, HIPAA, GDPR, and other industry regulatory compliance programs. I encourage everyone to look us up at uh, marlabs.com for more information. So with that overview, I will turn it over to Dan to expand the overview on dark trace and to present our case example. Thank you. Dan, over to you. Thank you very much. So hey everyone, my name is Dan Fine. I'm dark Trace's technology evangelist. So I work with some of the top companies in the world to demonstrate dark traces uh, approach and to help our customers maximize their experience with the technology. So some info about the company, as a way of background, we were founded by mathematicians and machine learning specialists uh, from the University of Cambridge. They brought a fundamentally new approach to the cybersecurity market, and we are now recognized as the world's number one company in artificial intelligence for cyber defense. We're headquartered in both San Francisco and Cambridge. We've grown in the last five years to over $400 million in total contract value and are deployed in over 7,000 uh, networks worldwide. Our customers range all over the world, all industry sectors, multinational, small, medium sized companies, uh, you name it. I'd like to point out a few, uh, you know, our Cole T Mobiles of the world, HSBCs, Coca Colas, um, those uh, household names, but also hedge funds with four folks. So, really a, a nice range. Um, and a tremendous amount of growth. I'd like to talk about the uh, cybersecurity challenges uh, and the landscape today. Um, so uh, next slide, please. So when Darktrace deploys our software and network, uh, there are tools in place, uh, next-gen firewalls, antivirus, SIMs, uh, yet our AI still finds threats and vulnerabilities uh, in the very first week. And so why is that? Uh, it's clear that sort of the old way of doing things, doing security, not enough. So 
Threats are getting more advanced and more diverse. Today's attackers move at machine speed, and ransomware is something we all know and some of us all too familiar with it is just the tip of the iceberg. And we also face increasingly silent and stealthy attackers that can learn to blend into the noise uh, of an environment. So, the different types of attacks, again, advanced, unpredictable. You have your insider threats that a firewall will do nothing to protect against. So, Dark Trace takes an inside out approach. It's a fundamentally different approach. Our algorithms are inspired by the principles of the human body's immune system. The skin protects us to a certain extent, but when a new virus or bacteria get inside our immune system, our immune system has a rapid and precise response. It works on the principles of understanding self, what's me, what's not me, and it uses this understanding to effectively target abnormal behaviors and take action against them. So that's how our immune system works, and Dark Trace's artificial intelligence works in a similar way. Our software knows what's what are the devices, what are the people connected to our network, and then we learn what normal activity looks like. We do this by building what we call a pattern of life. So we don't use or rely on any rules or signatures. We don't make any assumption of what bad looks like. Instead, this self-learning approach can detect and respond to threats in real time. And imagine if our human immune system only detected biological attacks but didn't respond. Because Darktrace has proven artificial intelligence, we've been able to take that very next step, and our AI can create a real-time response to genuine threats. This supports human operators by slowing down fast-moving threats, and it can contain an attack within seconds. It can take the action itself or automate the workflow by handing it off to a firewall, or take the action itself. So imagine the next wanna crime, machine speed attack with no known rule or signature to fingerprint it. We call this autonomous response, and it's very powerful, uh, and the only one available on the market. Next slide, please. So uh, I'd like to go through a quick case study uh, where Dark Trace was sat on a network. Uh, and it was a video conference camera that we saw because Darktrace is detecting any layer three device, any device with an IP address. So you don't need to put an agent on it, uh, right? A polycom phone, a video conference phone, a smart refrigerator. These are all things that Darktrace is seeing. Yesterday we released a threat discoveries report for 2018, a hacked blender, a hacked parking kiosk, different things across, uh, you know, the IoT space that are being compromised as footholds into networks. And in this case, Darktrace saw it was the only device uh, connecting externally via Telnet. It was an anomalously large volume of information uploaded to six external computers. And this is how Darktrace is, uh, is detecting it. We understand that the number of devices connecting externally on port 23 or over Telnet was zero. A new device comes in, don't have to have a rule looking for Telnet. Darktrace is saying that's unusual. Anomalously large, we understand what is normal for data transfers outside of the network. Where are the normal uh, locations where those devices are headed? And then what does it look like when an unusual amount of data goes to a rare location? So an unusual exfiltration of data because it was very large. Next slide, please. And so here is a short demo of Darktrace where you can see a device that was traversing the network. It started with an IP scan. So a device all of a sudden started to connect to more IPs than it normally communicates with. This was very quick in Shark. It was a device that uh, really early on a Friday from somebody in HR happened to start scanning the network. Super unusual on its own. This then started to gain access to a file server and move within that file server from directory to directory, which again was an interesting event. Finally, we saw a transfer of data from that machine. So three seemingly isolated events. Darktrace thought, hey, these are all kind of interesting, boiled up into one single breach, one single alarm 
set off within Darktrace to alert the end user that something is interesting. Darktrace took these three isolated events and made it one interesting, compelling anomaly. So you're not getting alerted thousands of, t of times. Darktrace is not contributing to the alert fatigue that we're all uh, sort of, you know, very tired of. So with that, I'd like to hear from, you know, Mar Labs and their integrations of Darktrace into their threat hunting. All right. Thanks, Dan. Thanks a lot uh, for the fascinating demo. And now let's do uh, a deep dive on, like, you know, the cyber threat hunting piece of it. So the cyber threat hunting uh, is part of cyber threat intelligence offering from Mar Labs. So as we know, threat intelligence is an evidence based in information, like you know, where you provide intel about an existing threat or an emerging threat to an environment. So at Marlabs, we have two offerings. One is a platform, which we call it as Rapid360. And then the second part of it, which is a, a service, which we call it as CTI Ops. So what is Rapid360? Rapid360 is a platform where we collect information from various sources, which I'll go deeper in a minute, and then it tries to correlate what are the threats that could possibly uh, fall into a corporate environment. Now the CTI Ops is the analyst service that we provide on the top of it, which uh, helps in hunting those threats uh, and going behind like, you know, what is the source behind it, where it was originated, and finding all the other parameters or vectors associated with it. Now the platform, like I said, let's take a deeper dive on what the platform looks like, or what, is, what does it do? So Rapid360, like I said, we collect information outside the corporate environment, which originates from clear web, deep web, and dark web. I'm pretty positive all of this, I mean all that in this graph have heard a lot about it. So once we collect all this information from uh, clear, deep, and dark web, the next process, what we do is we have built a three core engine, which includes reconnaissance engine, analysis and production, and dissemination engine. Let me take a quick dive on what those engines are. So we pretty much follow the threat intelligence life cycle, which we broke it down into these three components of reconnaissance, where we do the collection. Uh, so we collect from various sources outside the network, like, you know, from the deep, dark, and clear web, and then we have automated and manual collection in place. Once we collect this data, what do we do with it, right? So we analyze the data to understand, okay, from the collected data, what are the global threats? What are the corporate threats? And what is the risk associated with this threat? So that is what the analysis and production engine creates and then disseminates to the audience in, the, in a way that they would like to get it. So, uh, so what as a customer would see is what are the global threats? What's happening? Like Dan was mentioning, uh, there's a ransomware out, uh, like you know, outage. So, what is that ransomware? What is it? How is it affecting globally? Who are the threat actors? And then, how does that affect the corporate environment? Yeah, you are using the same software or uh, operating system. So, am I vulnerable to the same, uh, like you know, vulnerability? Now, moving on to a quick, let's take a like you know, uh, deep dive on the solution or the platform by itself. So like I said, uh, we have Rapid360 platform and it goes to all the sources, collect information. Like I said, all the details are there on the side. You can go to rapid360.marlabs.com. And once we go in there, we will be seeing, like I said, what are the global threats? Like who are the threat actors? What is the trend that is happening today? Like, hey, like there are 100 threat actors acting across various threat categories on like, you know, they're dealing with counterfeits, they're dealing with like, you know, new TTPs discussed in underground marketplaces and forums, and then what are the industries and what are the IOCs associated with those threats? So like you can see right now, like you can see all what is the trend that is happening in global, and like, you know, who are the threat actors, what is, how, who are the active threat actors who is actively engaging in one or, one or more activities originating from dark web. So, this is not from the corporate or inside the network, it's purely outside the network. Now being said that we, we know what are the global threats, but what is that affects to your company, the corporate? So you can see like, you know, what is the trend? For, in, for instance, who are the key personnel to the company? What are information related to the key personnel are out there? 
and then we come up with a vulnerability index sorry a security index to show them hey your company is x person vulnerable because of one two three reason because your key personal information is there you are using a vulnerable solution or a technology and because of the data leaks your ip has a bad reputation etc based on that information we come up with a security index and then like you can see we can we come up we show what are the vulnerabilities in your environment based on the information we collect from dark web and then we try to correlate between hey this vulnerability is there this threat actor is being actively exploiting this vulnerability so go and fix it quick so then we have integrated with uh, other solutions like service now jira etc for the incident response and other taking action on what we see like you know making it actionable more uh, being said that the next uh, feature we have is like you know now you have to monitor what like you know you have to monitor specifically for some keywords or some rules so you can pretty much create a filter where you can add those what you want to monitor on the environment from a uh, corporate standpoint so that's what you can see like like i mentioned we will be collecting information from various sources and then you can create those filters and then get alert on whenever we find something we can create alert and then you can integrate with your solutions or take actions uh, being said that i would also like to say we have integrated our cti ops wherein like you know you are seeing some threat you want to know further hey i'm seeing a like you know a new ttp or can we do a threat hunting on is this particular threat active in the environment so that is what cti ops does now let's put all these things together on like you know how marlabs and dark trace play hand in hand or what is the synergy between marlabs and uh, rapid 360 and dark trace so we take two approaches here like i said rapid 360 what we do is uh, we collect information from various sources and since we collect that information we will be able to know like you know hey these are the active threat campaigns that is going on and then based on the information what we uh, collect we can start coming back into the corporate environment and see hey there is a threat, there is an active campaign going on these are the iocs associated with the campaign and is is that uh, campaign or is that ioc is already active in your environment so that is an outside in approach we start from the external external of it and then once we uh, start once we start from the external we find those as iocs come back to your environment and then like you know create those models or like you know rules to fight against it so that is kind of the inside out uh, outside in approach Uh, the second approach is the uh, inside out so let's say you are seeing a like you know an attack in your environment like uh, like dan was saying there is an alert fired from dark trace so uh, what could uh, rapid 360 help is that yeah, you see an like an ip address and then based on that ip address uh, like you know we can go back to rapid 360 and see were, were there any other uh, like you know iocs or whether whether there is any other ttps associated associated with the uh, same attack so that is kind of the outside in approach so it's like basically uh, dark trace sits and monitor your environment whereas rapid 360 looks outside the environment to see what are the threats and then helps in fine tuning your environment so that is kind of how uh, dark trace and rapid 360 goes hand in hand so uh, i think Uh, i think like uh, that's kind of it's not a it's co it complements each other in in different ways so uh, now that we have mentioned all this about like you know rapid 360 and dark trace so let's see how uh, how a complete holistic security approach we could take so we uh, like you know it's um, dark trace is helping you to see what is there in your inside your environment and rapid 360 helps in taking a view what is outside the environment that way like you know it's not one like you know it's not a one hand it's like you know it goes hand in hand and it gives a complete picture on like you know a, a high, like a holistic view on what are the advanced threats how that can be impacted to you or how can you better protect against this threat in this environment so uh, in that way like you know it we can be more proactive in a way like 
uh, before even before the attack comes or even the moment we get to know information about an active campaign we can go and proactively create those models or rules in the solutions and then rapid 360 helps in being prescriptive like you know it's not it doesn't just tell hey there is an attack but it gives a complete context around it like hey this is the threat actor this is the ttps they use like you know all that information around that attack what we would see and then as dan mentioned we see advanced threats and like you know these days threat, actor, threat actors doesn't come attack one and once and go back they come attack they like you know uh, in some of the reports it says it takes at least 200 days to initially identify that attack in your environment so they threat actors come pick, like you know get your get the way around to your environment and they stay like you know they will be sleeping in the environment so they will be probably doing a repetitive attack or things like that where uh, since dark phrase is an ai based solution they can help in identifying hey this is not normal this is an abnormal behavior so that behavioral based solution could help in like you know identifying that threat which are like you know sleeping threats i would say and then we can with the help of rapid 360 we can take that information go and find other details along with uh, along with uh, getting more information behind who is behind who when where what how etc now like we said it's an analytic based solution where we uh, like you know we analyze the data and then correlate the data and then it helps in investigating further on like you know when we need to engage with the law enforcement agencies or when we do need to do a forensics further it's better the more information we have it is better to identify the like you know uh, find dive deeper into the threats so that is how uh, the solution rapid 360 and uh, dark trace goes hand in hand and i think uh, let's move on to the uh, let's pick a couple of questions sure thank you thank you bumod and thank you dan that was very insightful so probably we'll go to the q and a uh, let me quickly check uh, some of the questions we'll take a few questions uh, the first one i see here is what happens if there is already a threat in the network when the technology is deployed dan would you like to take this one yeah, absolutely. Uh, so it's a really common question. Uh, so if Darktrace sits in a network that's already compromised, we actually go with that assumption, right? That you guys, we're not going to come in and then the next day a company is going to get compromised. So we will learn uh, basically everything there is to know about each device. And we might learn that a device, you know, is compromised, but we might think that's normal. That's okay until we start to recognize, well, what devices are acting similar to that device? And we begin to cluster and recognize what the people in marketing can, tend to do, people in finance tend to do, people who are sysadmins. And once we start to identify these clusters, we can identify which devices within those clusters are deviating. So it may be normal for a machine, but it's going to be abnormal compared to the rest of the devices that are similar. And this happens automatically. We don't take in any lists of who and which devices are part of, uh, you know, which departments or what they should be expected to do. This is all learned in real time and very quickly. Thank you, Dan. I'll take the next question. Uh, can you give an example of uh, Rapid360 and Doctrace working together? Vimod, you'd like to take this one? Yeah, sure, definitely. Uh, again, uh, like Dan said, this is kind of a common question we get it, like, you know, give some examples. So uh, let, me, let me give a, give an example that we worked very recently like and you know, it's a recent example which uh, we were working for one of our clients so uh, like you know there were some threat actors who was who were le uh, leveraging the chm for a backdoor trojan so they what they did was like you know they took a chm then they added like you know they pretty much uh, reverse uh, added the reversal code into it and then like you know the it was the payload was pretty much based on a uh, chm and then they embedded, they com recompiled the whole CHM and they were using this CHM for like, you know, uh, for an attack. So what we did was since we, since we were collecting this information from uh, various threat actors, so we were able to uh, see, hey, this is one of the TTPs that was commonly used by uh, like, you know, threat actors for getting into uh, corporate environments or like, you know, doing specifically on lateral movement, they were using this particular uh, CHM. So uh, this was one of the recent ones. So since we were like, you know, since we had rapid 360 in place, what it helped is the moment we found there is a new, like, you know, new TTP being employed, we were able to like, you know, yeah, 
this is kind of uh, how they get into the environment and this is how they move in lag 12 and then once we collected that information we were able to like you know we could go back to dark trace and then like you know uh, we were able to create a new model based on the behavior like hey there is a new there is an abnormal connection like dan was say, mentioning about the behavior so there was an abnormal connection that is uh, originating from this particular cnc server and then there is like you know this, it's trying to connect communicate between other machines within the same environment so it was like mostly um, mostly like you know uh, an attack that originated and then uh, since darkness was there we were able to go and like you know fix that solution uh, fix create that model so that uh, like you know thereafter then we did a test following up and then it was creating those alerts and we were able to successfully uh, mitigate this threat so this is one of the exam one of the very recent example that we have worked closely with there are a couple of other ones like you know uh, coin miners was very big so there was uh, one of our client where uh, they had an environment and uh, this coin miner was sitting in the environment and we were able to identify like you know, I mean doctors pretty much generated an alert saying hey there's an abnormal behavior like you know uh, a system is like you know working up on abnormal times etc and then once we collect that information we went back to rapid 360 and started digging deeper hey is this part of another campaign or like you know why is it like you know where where is the soul what is the source of this kind of attack and then we were able to identify it as part of another uh, huge campaign that was going on and then once we collected that information we were able to like you know identify hey it's not just one ip address that was associated with it it was like you know uh, taking all that uh, you are computing power and trying to connect to various pools, uh, various minor pools to, uh, like, you know, pretty much generate that environment. So that's another example uh, which we were working on. I can give another example. Uh, basically, there was an uh, similar to a CHM, there was, uh, you guys should be knowing about the SNMB polling that happened, like, I think it was like almost two months back. So, um, uh, what we did was like you know again uh, we we could see some alerts from in dark trace we took that one and then again we were able to identify as part of like you know it was as part of various campaigns they were using they were calling snmb and trying to break through the default credentials to get into the environment and then since we were able to identify those ttps we could go back to dark trace and then like we could uh, actively like you know fight against those threats so uh, I think maybe yeah, excellent. Uh, thank you, thank you, Bimal. We uh, we have one more question. Um, how um, how how can we do forensics leveraging these solutions? Probably I'll take that one. So you know, obviously these tools uh, uh, and and also uh, you know there are other sets of tools that is available to do a, a forensics uh, to to determine a breach activity. But what we have found is uh, you know having an end-to-end -end framework all the way from detection uh, response. And in and and uh, if there is a if there is a security event, uh, then how do we how do we do forensics uh, on that? So uh, we actually work closely with our partner uh, Lifars. You know they are a, a cybersecurity resilience partner, primarily focused on uh, digital forensics. And uh, you know uh, that's a, uh, one of our upcoming webinars coming up very soon. So we'll host a webinar. Uh, you know that uh, kind of gives you a end to end framework on. Uh, in a right from in a detection all the way up to the forensics. Okay, well, I'll take the next question. Is dark trace use logistic regression and clustering algorithms for machine learning? Uh, Dan, would you like to take? Yeah, that I'll take that one. Yeah, so uh, just to repeat, it looks like does dark trace use logistic regression and clustering algorithms for its machine learning? Uh, so. Answer to that? Yeah, sure. Uh, we really, at the end, course, end of the day, deploy 12 plus, 15 plus techniques of machine learning. So, uh, unlike other, you know, competitors or uh, anyone in the market, you know, claiming to use machine learning, they may use a single technique. Darktrace deploys uh, very many so that we can use the strengths and recognize the weaknesses of each one. So some may be very good at the short-term analysis, while others are very good at strong, uh, you know, strong at long-term analysis. So we want to make sure that if something uh, appears to be really unusual, but on a longer-term scale is actually totally normal, that we're deploying not just a single technique, but actually using very many to increase our chances of throwing only the most relevant alerts. So 
yes, of course, uh, anything from uh, unsupervised to supervised and deep learning, Darktrace is leveraging, you know, the latest and, you know, out of R&D, out of Cambridge, uh, sitting on the University of Cambridge. Thank you, Dan. I think there is a quick follow-up to that. Uh, is this an IDS replacement? Would you would you want to touch upon that? Uh, so we're not uh, in the field to say that we will be a rip and replace. We don't want to, uh, you know, tell anyone to get rid of anything. Uh, but IDS typically lives under the assumption of a rule and signature-based model, right? You have to have seen something before to know that it's bad to then see it again and, you know, kick it off the network or do whatever an IDS will do. Uh, with Darktrace, you don't have to have seen the attack. When WannaCry hit, Darktrace didn't need a new signature or fingerprint uh, to make sure that WannaCry was going to be stopped or alerted to within the network. So when we don't rely on the rules and signatures, when we rely on the sense of self, it's very obvious when something is not self. And with Antigena, our autonomous response uh, solution, you could actually take things that are like zero days and actually stop them in their tracks. So can it replace an IDS? Absolutely. Thank you, Dan. I think we are coming up to the top of the hour, and, uh, and I wanted to thank everyone for attending this webinar. Thank you, um, you know, the presenters. You know, you know, it was very insightful. Um, we will we will share share um, you know the you know the content uh, in our website very soon, and looking forward uh, you know uh, to meet all of you on the next webinar. Thank you, everyone.